My name is Daniela Perez. I work at the Instituto Argentino de Radioastronomía. This work uh, that I will present here was done in collaboration with Santiago Perez Berliafa from Universidad del Estado de Rio de Janeiro and Gustavo Romero from Instituto Argentino de Radioastronomía. In this talk, I will discuss about the behavior of dynamical black holes in a bouncing cosmological model. But first, let me introduce some concepts that are relevant to this subject. So, what is a black hole? A black hole is a region of space-time that is causally disconnected from the rest of the universe. Events that are inside the black hole have no influence on events that are outside the black hole. We usually think of a black hole as um, a region of space-time that if we enter, we, will, we won't be able to escape. This boundary that um, separates events from the inside to the outside of the universe is called the event horizon. And the event horizon is the defining feature of a black hole. Black holes were first discovered theoretically. A month later, after Einstein arrived to the final equations of general relativity, Schwarzschild found the first exact solution of Einstein field equations that described the geometry of space-time outside the spherically symmetric matter distribution. This is a vacuum solution of Einstein field equations. I'm showing the metric. We can see that the metric coefficients uh, do not depend on time. The solution is static and is also asymptotically flat. Now, if we assume that the mass m is concentrated at r equals zero, then the Schwarzschild solution represents a black hole. The Schwarzschild solution is the most simple of black hole solutions in general relativity. The, mo the most general black hole solution is the Kerr-Neumann metric. The Kerr-Neumann metric represents a black hole of mass m, charge, Q and angular momentum J. This uh, type of solutions um, have an important feature. They are stationary and asymptotically flat. However, we know that real black holes in the universe are dynamical objects that are subjected to a lot of processes. For instance, black holes that are in the center of galaxies are accreting material then the mass of the black hole is not anymore a constant, but changes with time. We also know that black holes are immersed in a cosmological background. So what happens with the event horizon? The event horizon is defined, or we can know the event horizon, if, you know, if we know the future, no infinity. But for dynamical black holes, this cannot be physically achieved. We cannot compute it. So if the event horizon, that is the defining feature of a black hole, cannot be computed for the case of dynamical situations, how do we study black holes, linear black holes in the universe? How we identify black holes in dynamical processes? We can ask ourselves, are there solutions of general relativity that represent black holes immersed in a cosmological background? What are the properties of these solutions? Well, the answer to the last question is positive. Yes, the first uh, exact solution of Einstein field equations that describes a central inhomogeneity meeting in a Friedman Lemaitre Robertson, -Wal uh, Robertson Walker background was find found by McVitie in the year 1933. I'm showing the line element of this metric written in isotropic coordinates. M0 is the mass of the central object, and A of t is the scale factor of the background cosmological model. How can we derive this metric? Two basic, there are two basic assumptions. First, for the metric ansatz. So what first you have to do is to write the Schwarzschild metric in isotropic coordinates, then you have to add 
a conformal factor, a of t, squared to the spatial part. And then you have to make the mass parameter m a function of time. So that's once you have done these three operations, that's the form of the line element. This with respect to the metric. But the matter is assumed to be a perfect fluid with density rho and isotropic pressure p. That's the form of the energy momentum tensor. And u is the four velocity of the fluid. And this uh, fluid has zero velocity with respect to the chosen reference frame. Another important hypothesis is that there is no equation of state assumed for the matter. So once we have this metric ansatz and the energy momentum tensor, we insert them into Einstein field equations. Uh, well, we will have or we will be able to derive a system of three equations for four unknowns, which are m of t, the scale factor a of t, the density and the pressure. The TR component of the Einstein tensor is equal to zero. We have that's equal to that equation that I'm showing that if you integrate, you obtain m of t as a function of the constant m0 and the scale factor. So m0 represents or can be interpreted as the mass of the central object. And the last equation is, um, uh, can be also interpreted as that the central object is, um, has, uh, or is not accurate. So with this form for m of t, we can replace it into the line element in the general form, and we will obtain the Magnetic metric. In the limit that the scale factor is equal to one, we can recover the Schwarzschild metric in isotropic coordinates. Now, if we make the mass equal to zero, what we will have is the line element for the friedman lemaitre robertson walker uh, cosmological model. The Magniti metric has been studied uh, over the, the last decades. In particular, um, it was studied for a lambda CDM cosmological background, and it was interpreted as represented, a, a, that, that metric represents a black hole. So what we wanted to study is this Magbiti space time, but for a bouncing cosmological model. So this requires um, to make a full analysis of the causal structure of the space time. This includes, includes computing the trapping horizons, the radial ingoing and outgoing new geodesics. And after all this analysis, the final question that we would like to answer is if there is a black hole present in any of the stages of the cosmological evolution. That if, if there is a black hole present before, during, or after the bounce. For the cosmological uh, background model, for the bouncing model, we have chosen um, that scale factor for simplicity. Models with a bound, bounce join a contracting phase in which the universe was very large and almost flat initially to a subsequent expanding phase. This expression for the scale factor was obtained by Selani and co-workers by considering quantum corrections to the classical evolution of the scale factor. So we now are in conditions to compute the tropping horizons, but first it's important or is convenient to write the metric in terms of the aerial radius coordinate that is defined in there. So we first compute the trapping horizons. These are surfaces where the convergence properties of null geodesics change. It's defined by that expression where theta uh, in are the expansion of radial null ingoing geodesics and theta out are the expansion of radial null outgoing geodesics. So when we make this computation, 
we uh, can compute the, um, the trapping horizons. I'm showing also here the form of the explicit form of the uh, Hubble factor. And on the left, there is a plot uh, of the trapping horizons as a function of T and R. The black line curve denotes the trapping horizons. The dot dash line, the singularity that is located at R equal to M0. The first thing that we notice is that the shape of the curve of the trapping horizons is symmetric with respect to the axis t equal zero. In this uh, zone, just before and after the bounce, we see there is a, a trapping horizon, but it has not much of importance. This is just a surface where the convergence properties of new geodes exchange and, and that is all. But then we have no trapping horizons if we are analyzing for positive values of the time coordinate. And then an inner and an outer horizon appears. The smaller one we call R minus and the larger R plus. In the limit that the the time coordinates goes to infinity, R minus goes to R equal to M zero, while R plus goes to infinity. The same occurs for negative values of the time. So in our analysis, we uh, will be central the behavior of geodesics, new geodesics, in the neighborhood of this surface, R minus equal um, to M zero to, um, uh, to understand if a black hole or not is present in this metric. So after computing the trapping horizons, we compute the null geodesics of the metric. We begin with the outgoings by choosing the plus sign. I'm showing in this plot the trajectories of outgoing null geodesics. Uh, again, the black line denotes the trapping horizons and the dashed line the uh, location of the singularity. We see that for positive values of the, of the time, the outgoing geodesics are all expanding while for negative values of, of t to the past of the bounds, we have that outgoing geodesics seems to come from this surface, r minus, r minus uh, equal to 2m0. In the case of ingoing null geodesics, we are choosing the minus sign now for the integration, the behavior of the, ge the geodesics is the, the opposite. For positive values of the uh, coordinate uh, time, rather than going null geodesics, seems they all seem to turn asymptotically to the surface r minus equal to m zero for very large values of the um, time coordinate, while for negative values before the bounds, they all seem to be expanding. So, as I have said before, it is important to analyze the behavior of ingoing null geodesics um, in the limit uh, in the limit for very large values of the coordinate time near the surface r minus equal to m zero. Because if these geodesics are approaching the surface, it could be the case that they reach the surface and they go through this surface and if they are not able to go back to the region they were before, then we will be in the presence of an event horizon and then of a black hole. So what we have to prove now is that null ingoing geodesics for the positive part reach this surface in an affine, uh, in a finite time of time, and that this surface is regular.
So now I will go um, briefly on these two subjects. First, uh, we have we have shown that uh, non ongoing geodesics reach this uh, this surface. In order to prove this, you have to make a change of variables from the R area radius coordinate to the Z coordinate that now uh, will be on the interval zero to one and also for the time. I'm showing in on the right side a plot of the integration of the trajectories of knowing going geodesics and we can see that they all converge to R equal to M0 in a finite interval of time. So they do reach this surface. Secondly, we would like to know if this surface is regular. Why? Because if you compute, for instance, the Ricci scalar for the magnetic metric, you will find that on this surface for finite values of time, uh, the Ricci uh, scalar diverges. So uh, previous analysis, for instance, of N Brian Nolan in a paper of 1999 have showed that this is a singularity, R equal to N0 for finite values of time is a singularity by a weak singularity. But we would like to know the behavior of this surface for very, very large values of the time coordinate. So what we have done is to compute the components of the riemann tensor using an appropriate bare brain that I'm showing here. And this calculation was done on geodesics that were approaching on uh, were approaching to this surface. Uh, what we have found is that all the components of the Riemann tensor have finite values on uh, this surface. So the conclusion is that new ingoing geodesics reach the surface, the surface is regular. Once they go through the surface, they cannot go back to the regular region of the, the space-time. Indeed, they enter into a trap region of space-time. And that's precisely the definition of a black hole. So what we have shown is that after the bounce for very, very large values of the time, a black hole is present. What about before the bounce? For this, I would like you to show um, two diagrams of the light cone structure before and after the bounce. Before the bounce, um, we have plotted some light cones. We see that they are pointing or they have in their local future um, the trapping horizons. But as the time becomes smaller or more negative, these light cones begin to till and they start to point to the surface R equal to M0 for very, very, very large values of the coordinate time. They are all pointing to that surface. So they will, any particle that goes, material particle or also photons that are going through the these light cones will have in their future this surface. They will go through the surface and they will not be able to go back to the regular region of the space-time. So again, we are in the presence of a black hole before the bounce occurs. But for very, 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 very large values of large and negative values of time. And here I'm showing also uh, on the right a plot of the light cone structure after the bounce. And uh, what we can see is that there are some geodesics, in particular outgoing geodesics that here are denoted or are uh, marked with the dot dash curve that can, um, um, can leave the surface and go to infinity. But as time goes by, the slope of the curve for outgoing geodesics becomes more and more and more vertical. And in the limit, 
they will become so vertical that they will coincide with the uh, surface R equal to M0. So they won't be able to go through this cipher. They, will, they um, won't be able to escape to infinity. So here we are also showing with another kind of plot that after the bounds for very, very large values of the coordinates, the time coordinate, a black hole is present. So let me go uh, to the conclusions. So we have shown in this work that uh, the MacBT uh, metric represents a black hole in the remote past and in the distant future for a universe that goes through a classical bounds. So the situation is that when the universe is almost flat initially, we have a black hole. But as the contraction begins, the black hole character of the solutions disappears. That's why geodesics can go out of this surface. The universe goes through a bounce, then begins to expand again. And as this, the expansion begins and goes on, the, uh, a black hole starts to form. And for very, very, very large values of the coordinate time, a black hole is formed. This is our main conclusion. Uh, another in, in point is that there is no cosmological big bound singularity. Um, if you have a careful look to the previous diagrams, there are some geodesics that never encounter, encounter the singularity. Um, and this is not the case, for instance, in other type of MacBD models. Um, in Lambda CDM model, all geodesics are, ge are geodesically incomplete. And this is not the case in, in the present, for the present metric. Can we improve this uh, model? The answer is yes. Uh, in particular, as I have uh, mentioned uh, at the beginning of the talk, the magnetic metric does not take into account accretion under the central object. Um, but uh, the generalized magnetic metrics uh, do, and so um, we would like to analyze in the future what is the effect of a bouncing cosmology on these solutions and whether a black hole is present or not. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, here I'm showing you the references uh, that I have uh, mentioned uh, in this talk and also my, the contact. So if you have any questions, doubts, would like to discuss about these topics, um, please, there is no problem writing. Thank you very much.